All right, today's workout is called Burpees Gone Bad, and it's gonna be run in a similar format as the Fight Gone Bad workout, which is usually three rounds, five stations with one minute at each station. So uh, we're gonna go through this three times, starting with first minute of pistols and one-legged squats, and I'll go over different scaling options for that. Inverted candlestick burpees, uh, we've done these once before, we're gonna do them again. Push-ups, half a burpee. Alternating one-legged deadlifts. And I did that in the warm-up, but just to go over some more standards. And then of course, burpees, what a great way to end it. Then you do get a minute of rest. So after your three rounds, after the five stations, you do get a minute of rest. And then we're gonna start from the top. Okay, so let's go over uh, the different movements, how to do them. And then I'm actually going to split this into another video so we can do the entire workout which will be about uh, 17 minutes or so uh, to do the whole thing. So just to shorten the videos, uh, the actual workout will be in the next video. So if you're ready to do that, go on ahead. But if you want to go over different scaling options, I'm going to do that right now. Okay. So first of all, let's go over pistols and one-legged squats. So a pistol is technically um, doing a squat free floating with only one leg. So you're lifting one leg up. You're going to come down into a squat this leg should not be able to touch the ground, so you can hold it with your foot or have it straight out in front of you, and then standing all the way back up, alternating each leg, making sure that hip comes below full range of motion. Uh, so a couple different options that you have. Something that may help is having a counterbalance weight. So let's tell you, I got some really odd objects here. Here's a a box of chicken stock. Okay, so this is my counterbalance. It's just a couple of pounds, but sometimes having something out in front of you can help to keep your body weight and your torso a little bit more over your thigh. And so one of the key things with pistols, it's a little different from an air squat. Regular air squat, we're really trying to stay upright and tall with our chest because we've got our balance distributed across both feet. With a pistol, we do want our weight a little bit more forward. Um, so our body weight should be centered over our foot when we're down in the bottom of the pistol instead of being back because otherwise we're just going to fall back in our butts. So having a counterweight of some kind, uh, either a med ball may also help. If you have access to a small plate, so this is a great one if you have a shoe with a heel on it or if you have you know, something like a pad of paper that you can use to elevate your heel, a lot of times just having your heel elevated can help you get down into that squat a little bit more effectively. So that's a couple tricks. Now, if you still find that doing the RX version is really tough, uh, here's a couple options. First of all, is going to a target. So you can have a chair and you can actually go one-legged. You can hold something in front of you if you want to counterbalance, sit down on that chair, stand, and then trying to find your balance there. Um, again, keeping your weight forward, not allowing yourself to fall back on your heel, but just make sure that your shoulder stays over your heel. Okay, shoulder stays right over the foot, and that's really gonna help you uh, getting the balance for that pistol squat. Um, so that is our option. Other option two, you can stand on a chair, and then bring one leg down. I would like to come down with the heel, first of all, instead of the foot. If you come down on the toe, then what happens is your heel will actually lift on the chair. So keeping this whole foot grounded, bringing the heel down and then standing. And then if you're gonna do this version, I would do like five per side and then switch to the other side. Uh, and that would be a great option. Lastly, if none of those things are in your capabilities, you could always do reverse lunges. So standing, and then doing a reverse lunge to get that one-legged work. Stand up to full extension, and then back knee back to the ground, standing up full extension. So the way we're gonna count these is one, two, three, et cetera. So each leg, each time you do a rep is a one rep. So we're gonna do a minute of that. Now we've got inverted candlestick burpees. So let me show you the full movement. We did kind of some of this in the warm up with the rolling. So basically, inverted candlestick burpee, you're gonna start from a standing position, then you're gonna roll back, lift your hips, 
and then stand and extend. So if that is not in your capabilities to roll, jump, get that range of motion, you may also opt to do air squat and then jumping jack. Air squat, jumping jack. And those two together, air squat plus jumping jack is one rep. So those are your scaling options for the inverted candlestick. Next we got push-ups. So the full RX is in a plank position, chest to the floor, and then full lockout. <laughs> Scaling options, you may choose to have your knees on the ground and do a knee push-up. You may also do it to a target. So if you have something that's about roughly two feet high, push up to a target. And that's a great way to work on your plank skills. So any of those options are great and you can do that for roughly about a minute. I mean, pick something that you know you can get at least 10 reps, maybe 15. Uh, so kind of vary it up. All right, alternating one leg, single leg deadlifts. So we did these in the warm up. So um, ideally you would have some kind of object as a target to touch in front of you. So um, to scale it, taller object, to do it as prescribed, uh, you can touch your foot. So single leg deadlift, and you're gonna alternate legs. So you're gonna reach down with opposite foot, touch your toe, and then stand full extension. So you have to come to full extension with each one, bringing that leg back down. So touch and stand, touch and stand. And believe me, these get pretty tiring. These can be pretty taxing on the hamstrings after a while. Uh, but hopefully it's something that you can pick up a lot of reps on, you know, it helps to work on your balance, especially when you're fatigued, you're going to be really challenged there with your balance. And uh, lastly, we got our favorite burpees. I mean, who would call a workout burpees gone bad if you didn't have burpees? So full standard is just getting your chest and thighs to touch the ground and then extending at the top. So however you do that, um, I've been doing a step back knee push up version lately. So that means uh, I'm gonna do a push up from the knees instead of a full plank push up. And then stepping or hopping the feet up, going wide will be easier than going narrow because the wider your stance is, technically the shorter the distance you have to jump uh, because of the pyramid shape that you're making. If you jump up with straight legs, usually it's a further uh, forward fold, okay? So again, the forward fold is easier if you are jumping wide. And then extending shoulders over the ankles. Okay, a lot of times I see the burpees are here where the shoulders are forward and we wanna get in a good habit of coming to that full extension. So chest to the floor and then hop at the top. I'm counting those two burpees in my 30, uh, 10,000 challenge. Okay, so that's gonna go over all the movements. So again, the workout is three rounds of the following five stations, a minute rest, and that's it. So I'll see you at the next video and we're gonna start the workout promptly.